Welcome to Full Front Hall and welcome to 2018. <gasps> I hope your New Year's resolution is to register to vote because mine is to kick non-voters in the face. <laughs> anyway, last week was like a perfect storm of events designed to piss off our president. It began with something he hates, bad press, and ended with something he hates more, women who don't tolerate sexual assault. A new day is on the horizon. Oh shit, she broke Laura Dern. Okay. <laughs> But the year's best piece of entertainment wasn't on Sunday night, it was on Sunday morning, when journalist and research team panty wetter Jake Tapper interviewed Trump's senior advisor and human-like casing filled with wriggly squid tentacles, Stephen Miller. When Tapper had the audacity to bring up the president's former top aide accusing his son of treason, Miller got riled up. Oh, that's his riled up face. All these so-called political geniuses in Washington, whether it be at the big lobbying firms or the only many person of the who's called himself a genius Congress, in the last week is the president. But the, the, which because happens to be a true statement. Okay. A self made billionaire who revolutionized reality TV and, and who I'm has sure changed the course he's of our watching politics. and he's happy that you said that. Trump was happy. So happy he unfurled one of his precious hairs and gave it to him as a prize. The reason Stephen Miller had to go on TV and pledge his loyalty to Trump was the new book, Fire and Fury, which has dominated the news for a week. It's insanely popular, like an all Slytherin Harry Potter. <laughs> but fun as it is, it's riddled with inaccuracies, it's thinly sourced and full of typos. I mean, Steve Bannon is gross, but I don't think he does anything with mounting ferocity and pubic venom. <laughs> Actually, on second thought, that might not be a typo. <laughs> Bannon's quotes in the book ended the Trump-Bannon bromance and Trump got full custody of the Pepes. Steve Bannon is out at Breitbart. Well, at least now that he's out of the public eye, he can spend more time doing what he loves, living in a painting and waiting to fight the Ghostbusters. <laughs> Fury is basically the book-length version of a Trump tweet, only vaguely truth-adjacent, but incredibly distracting, which is too bad, because while everyone on cable news was fixated on Michael Wolff's shoddy ninth-generation Xerox copy of Game Change, there were actual things happening, like news and stuff, or whatever, I don't know, mostly to brown people. So preparations for the 2020 census. The Department of Justice is now trying to get census to add an additional question on citizenship to that census, which is likely to depress turnout or uh, participation of Hispanics. Putting a citizenship question on the census is a real racist win-win. Either they get a list of undocumented immigrants or Hispanic people avoid answering the census and lose congressional representatives and funding. Efficient! Look, you can't just add whatever questions you want to the census for your own agenda. Otherwise, George W. Bush would have added, do you have a pretty pony in anticipation of his painting career? We also missed this teensy little bit of news. The U.S. also formally suspended security aid to Pakistan's military, as President Trump had threatened. The State Department announced the freeze will last until Pakistan takes, quote, decisive action against terrorists. But it said there may be some exceptions. That's right, we've frozen security aid to Pakistan. But there might be some exceptions, like if Pakistan wrote some really nice tweets about the president. <laughs> Giving tons of money to a broken state like Pakistan does suck. The only thing that sucks more is not giving them money. Cutting them off means cutting ourselves off from the most accessible routes into Afghanistan, which our military needs to bring our troops important supplies and the comedians we're trying to get rid of. <laughs> this shit is complicated. Not just frontline complicated, like two-part frontline complicated. <laughs> But it matters. 2018 is going to be a really important year, guys, and we need to keep our eye on the ball. We can't count on pundits to help. They're going to keep getting distracted by the nonsense of the day, like fruitless speculation about Trump's mental health. The new White House expose revealed even the president's inner circle has concerns about whether he is mentally fit, mentally competent to run the country. How mentally fit the president is in terms of his age and ability to comprehend information. Do you believe the president is mentally fit to serve as president? <laughs> well, I... Wow, now they all have dementia. 
Is President Trump okay? Fuck no! He thinks his microwave is listening to him and that everything is poison but cheeseburgers. But crazy is what the American people chose. Yes, Trump is easily distracted, doesn't care about the truth, and focuses on whatever shiny thing is in front of him. But if that's enough to get you declared mentally incompetent, they're gonna need to build a bigger asylum. We'll be right back.